So welcome, glad to have you here. Today we'll talk a little bit about some things you can do to make your grant application the best it can be. And uh, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, first of all, I wanted to point out that you don't have to be a professional grant writer to apply for a grant uh, with the Nebraska Arts Council. If you follow recommendations that I'm providing today, you should be able to prepare a successful application. I cannot overstress the importance of allowing plenty of time to prepare your application. Read the guidelines and look over all components of the application so that you understand everything that you're going to need. We encourage you to contact NACS staff with any questions. We welcome inquiries and can assist you in getting started or clarifying application requirements and guidelines. If you approach your application as if it's a planning tool for your project, you'll end up with a well-planned project as a result. We understand that NAC applications require a lot of information. We are a state agency. We are accountable to the public to, and we therefore do have a lot of requirements. So there, it can take some time to complete your application. However, going back to the idea of approaching your application as if it's a planning tool, um, not only will the result be a well-planned project, but it's going to be a project that's more likely to be successful as, as well. <clears throat> Panelists from across the state and sometimes from out of state review NAC grants. They may be unfamiliar with your organization or your community. So you want to paint a picture for them. Don't assume that they know about you or your community. Once you have your application prepared, run it past somebody else, preferably somebody who doesn't know about your project. Ask them, uh, does the application make sense? Does it read well? Are you using acronyms that are not explained? This is a big one that comes up pretty often. Make sure your acronyms, acronyms are explained somewhere in your narrative. Refer to the scoring and review rubric. We'll get to that in a minute because this is what the panelists use when they are scoring your grant. Rubrics for each grant category are available on our website and there is a link within each application as well. So here's an image of one of our scoring rubrics, and you'll see that it's divided into three key areas. And the details vary from one grant category to another, but in general, these are the main areas that reviewers look for in your application to determine whether or not it will be funded. Artistic quality, planning and evaluation, and outreach and engagement. Reviewers will look for evidence of artistic quality in your narrative and required materials such as artist bios or work samples. Reviewers will also look for evidence of good planning in your narrative descriptions, in your very detailed and accurate budget, and in your timeline. Evaluation plans should also be thoroughly addressed in your narrative. Under outreach and engagement, you'll want to have well e explained methods in your narrative responses, but letters of support and other supporting materials can also help you make the case for your outreach. Underserved communities may not necessarily be the primary target group for many projects, but Reviewers award up to 10 points, depending on the extent of your efforts to include individuals with limited access to the arts and how well you can explain this. So we'll go into a little more detail now in each of the three key areas. Okay. 
under artistic quality. Uh, it may seem obvious, but remember to keep the arts as the central focus of your application. Occasionally, we see applications that, for whatever reason, don't really explain the arts components of the project. Don't overlook naming the artist who's participating or the place where things will happen or how long it will take to happen. Artists or arts educator bios also help you make the case for artistic quality. Provide only three work samples, not a page with 10 hyperlinks. Be mindful that an outside reviewer might have a dozen applications to read. So select your work samples very carefully. What materials can you provide that help you paint that picture of your project for the reviewer? Sometimes careful editing on your part is more helpful to the reviewer than throwing everything at them. That can be overwhelming and they may not end up looking at everything you send them. The next key area of our grant applications are under planning and evaluation. You may want to approach your planning through a process called backward design. Start with what you want to achieve and then work backwards to determine how you are going to get there. A quick Google search on backward design will lead you to a great deal of information about this concept. But here's a very simple example. Start with say two goals of creating an event that is going to reach 100 people and that also includes an impactful arts experience for the participants. Okay, you've got your goals. What are the steps that you need to take to make these things happen? From determining who you want to reach and the artists who you will hire to designing the arts activities and marketing the project. All the while, consider how you measure the results and evaluate the success of your project. Think about incorporating evaluation as part of the planning continuum, not just something you do at the end. Also, if you're applying for a grant for a project that has been funded before, Explain how your past evaluations are being used to refine and improve your project. Reviewers would like to know how you've modified your project in previous years based on what you've learned. Show us the pre-planning, tell us the detail, who is in charge of each task and if it's going to be or if it's already been accomplished. Think of this as a key planning piece as part of your project. Also, careful attention to the budget is an important component of your planning. I encourage everyone here to check out the separate recording of our Budget Basics webinar for more detailed information about NAC grant budgets. But briefly, I'll go over some key elements of budgeting here. Different NAC grant categories have different budget requirements, but in general, your budget proposal should explain your key expenses, as well as your anticipated income sources that will be used to pay for them. In other words, budget proposals must be balanced with total expenses equaling total income. Your budget proposal should demonstrate enough income including your grant requests to pay for all your expenses. If you've mentioned it in the narrative, make sure it's reflected in the budget. For instance, if you talk about specific artists, make sure their fees are present in your budget. If you reference various sponsors in your narrative, their monetary contribution should be listed in the budget too. Your budget should be realistic. Budget, reviewers can often spot budget items that seem unrealistic or even inflated. NAC budgets are cash budgets and may only include actual cash expenses or income. However, 
if there are in-kind contributions to your project, such as donated space for your venue, we recognize that they add a great deal of value to the project, and we encourage you to discuss these in the narrative or in the text box of your budget worksheet. By the way, um, you can enter questions in the chat box and we'll come back to those at the end of this. The third main component of grant reviews has to do with outreach and engagement. Here, you wanna tell us about your community Explain who your audience is. How is the community involved in your project? Are you taking into account the changes in demographics or needs of your community? How are you promoting the project to your target audience? And consider, are the methods of promotion in line with your audience? Also, letters of support from partner organizations can be a window into the community outreach and impact for the reviewer who is assessing your application. Make sure your letters are current and specific to the project. Explain the extent of your outreach to underserved audiences. Why do you consider this group to be underserved? The NEA definition is quite broad and it's really up to you to make the case for this aspect of your outreach and explaining why you think a particular group is underserved and let us know. You'll find that there are quite a few questions pertaining to accessibility in NAC grant applications. The Nebraska Arts Council is proud to be a statewide leader promoting accessibility for all of our citizens. And increasingly, we see that arts organizations are finding ways to be more proactive in serving individuals with disabilities, from hiring American Sign Language interpreters for events to creating large print programs and we encourage you to think about ways you can increase access for your audience. All projects that we support must comply with the Americans with Disabilities Act or ADA. And remember, when you go through the accessibility checklist, you're responding that you will provide these services if they are requested. Please feel free to contact our staff if we can help you in any way with questions around accessibility, something we really, really encourage. So I'll summarize key points that I went through very briefly today. Um, first of all, start early, give yourself time to prepare your application, make sure you cover all the basics in your application. Tell us who, what, when, where, and why, just like you did in your ninth grade essays. <laughs> Make sure information is consistent across all parts of the application. For example, Make sure your start and end dates line up with your timeline, the number of people served, the budget, the narrative, all of these should be aligned with one another. Some of our questions may have two parts. Be sure to answer everything fully in each of our questions and stick just with what is asked for in the application. We encourage you to keep reviewers in mind throughout the process. And again, going back to the scoring rubric, that will help you see what those reviewers are looking for. Remember that they may be not only reading your application, but quite a few others. Therefore, you want to tell everything, but keep it succinct. There's a fine line between explaining the details of your project and overwhelming them with too much information. 
can't tell you exactly where that line falls, but it's something to be aware of throughout the proposal. Before you submit your application, think about, have you gotten feedback from somebody else? So give it a second look over. Um, a good friend can give you invaluable feedback. If you contact the Arts Council staff well ahead of time, sometimes we can also make time to give you the feedback, uh, our feedback about the application. Overall, is your proposal clear and consistent and thorough? And pull out the review criteria sheet. This is what the reviewers will be using. Finally, when your project has been funded by the Nebraska Arts Council, let your elected officials know how important their support of public funding for the arts is to your community. Thank you.